Welcome back to Sheet Metal is Fun. We're going to make three do-it-yourself tools today, and they're going to take your fabrication to the next level. Let's get started. Welcome back to Sheet Metal is Fun. Today we're going to make three do-it-yourself tools that are going to help you get some of the jobs done if you've watched our channel. Some of the things you're going to be able to make with the tools that you're going to make today. So we're going to make, out of this piece of scrap metal, we're going to make the Hole Finder Deluxe, also known as the Hole Finder 5000, or the Hole Finder 1000. We're gonna make a folding tool that I introduced in our last lesson where we made the waste paper basket. And this is gonna turn into our folding tool. That's the second one. Third one is we're gonna make a creasing wheel and uh, I'm gonna show you how you can make this waste basket with a little bit more predictability if you make one of these high-tech pieces of wood with a piece of angle iron on it. But first, before we do that, I want to get right to our book of fabulous fabricators. We got some folks going in today. I'm really excited about this one. So we've got, let's start off with Mike H. from the United Kingdom. Mike H. made a... Um, he made a tray for his welding cart. So even though we haven't made a welding cart tray, Mike was able to apply what he has learned here and make a very handy tray for his welding cart. That's cool. That's what we want. We want people to be able to fabricate useful, durable goods and achieve a sense of accomplishment along the way. That was Mike H. from United Kingdom. All right, look at this one, hon. This is, I'm going to put my glasses on. This is Mike G. And boy, did he ever make a heart-shaped box. Mike G. is from Shipston on Stour, Warwickshire, England. And look at this copper box. He polished it up heart-shaped box. Oh boy, let me see if there's anything on the back that I'm missing. Mike got it. Let's see. Mike said, thanks for all your great work. Come on, Mike. You're the one doing great work. Look at that beautiful heart-shaped box. Love it. You're going in our Fabulous Fabricators. Next, we have Chris H. from Louisville, Kentucky. He made an organizer bin. Look at that. Look at that little thing of beauty. Let's see. How did he do, folks? You be the judge. Come on, Chris H. from Louisville, Kentucky. You're awesome. You rock. You're going to the book of Fabulous Fabricators. Look at that. Nice job, Chris from Louisville, Kentucky. And then we've got the last one in today's book of Fabulous Fabricators. <sighs> when we started our channel, we started this in the hope that we can encourage folks to take on a task that may be out of their comfort zone. But also, if you were already inclined to fabrication, maybe we could help take you to the next level or maybe we could encourage you or inspire you or show you something new. This is super exciting for me. Back in uh, 1982 when I was a third year apprentice as a sheet metal worker, I finished up uh, number one in the state of California. And uh, this, I got to be honest with you, I, I, um, I uh, shed a a tear of joy 
over this. Uh, I want to make sure, is that too much glare? Can you still see that? Hold it a little flatter this way or a little more up? All right, so what I want to do while you're looking at that, I'm going to try to lean back here. So Matthew B. is a teacher. He teaches mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems, and HVAC at a high school in Dandridge, Tennessee. He has a student named Noah, and uh, Matthew, the teacher, is competing in the uh, Skills USA competition. And uh, uh, Matthew, this, the school teacher, was very kind, and he uh, he mentioned that he actually has his students watch some of our videos because there's something to be learned and. I can't, I can't think of a higher compliment than that. And so what uh, Noah did, this is Noah in the middle. We had a lesson on how to make a squared around. If, if you had to look it up, you'd, I think it's under introduction to triangulation. So when I, in 1982, so what is that, 42 years ago, I finished number one in the state of California in the sheet metal workers competition and I am so grateful that I had an opportunity to make a video and give them a couple of tips on how to make a squared around and I'm going to turn this sideways because I want you to see uh, Matthew the teacher said that Noah gained some knowledge from our lesson on the squared around and that helped him in the competition and Noah actually came in first place in the state of Tennessee in sheet metal this year 2024 and I just uh, so the next thing is that angle okay hun um, so uh, Matthew the teacher said that uh, Noah won around a thousand dollars worth of sheet metal tools that he may have otherwise not been able to afford. And now they are continuing to practice and continue to educate themselves. And they are gonna go to Atlanta, Georgia to the national competition. And uh, man, I am so grateful, Matthew, that you would consider us part of your curriculum and that you would gather something of value from our lessons. And Noah, um, it says right here, go, Noah. And Noah, I just want you to take it to him. Go down there and do your best. And just have a good time. And, uh, oh, I better watch out. I'm going <laughs> to. Noah, that's awesome. Brings back a lot of great memories. So before I cry, let's go ahead and put these fabulous fabricators in our book. So this time I got to go all the way to the back, right, baby? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all right. Noah, you're a rock star. Number one in Tennessee. There you go. That is a beautiful square around. Chris from Kentucky. That's an awesome organizer, Ben. Mike G from Shipston on Stour, Warwickshire, England. Beautiful copper heart-shaped box. And Mike H, also from the United Kingdom, made a beautiful drawer, very, uh, very useful drawer for his welding cart. That is so exciting for Stacy and I to be a small part of somebody taking on a challenge and uh, and developing a sense of accomplishment. We are super glad to have you guys in our fabulous fabricators book. Congratulations to all of you. Now let's get on to today's lesson. We're gonna make three things, three do-it-yourself tools. So in one of our lessons, we made this tool tray. Then in a complimentary lesson, we added a drawer to the bottom of the tool tray. But if you'll notice on the end of the handle, there are three rivets. And can you get in here, hon, and see that third rivet right under there? 
This is the tool tray, what it looked like before we added the drawer on the base. But something I want you to notice, there are only two rivets in here. I have only have two because what I'm going to show you today is the whole the whole finder uh, 175 what we want to do is be able to put this third rivet into our handle but it's very congested in here and it would be very difficult to get our drill in here with any precision and to drill that final hole so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this this is pretty high-tech Fold it over on itself. Oh, anywhere. I only made it, this was just a, a piece of scrap. There was no uh, given uh, uh, dimensions. So what we're gonna do, now that we folded it in half, we're gonna punch a hole with our Whitney punch, number five Whitney. Our hole finder, uh, uh, 120 is going to, is made of 26 gauge galvanized. So all we've done so far is grab a piece of scrap from behind the shear, fold it in half, punch a hole. Now let's cut off all this stuff we don't need. Make sure the scrap always goes away from your eyes. Let's clean this up while we're in the mood. And we are in the mood. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is locate this third rivet. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna reach in here and I'm gonna mark where I want it. I put the mark right there where I want it. Now, let's do the same thing over here. I'm going to put the mark right here. I'd like a rivet right in the center of that tab. Now we're going to take our hole finder 6000. And identity crisis. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you should have seen the identity crisis it had when it was just a piece of scrap metal laying behind the shear. Now it is something. Okay, so now I have a hole in my hole finder uh, zippity doodah. I'm gonna line this hole up in our hole finder with the mark. So if my fingers get in the way, you know what I'm doing. I'm putting the hole over a hole finder on the mark and I'm gonna transfer that mark out here to the outside. Let's do that same thing again here. All right, there's the hole. I'm just gonna give that a light pinch. And the hole finder deluxe has now done its job. So what I've been able to do is transfer this mark over here where it's easily accessible for our drill. I'm gonna to go to high speed and low pressure just cause that's a really thin tab and it's gonna have a tendency to move. Matter of fact, it's going to have such a tendency to move. We've got this vice grip just sitting around here, bored, nothing to do. Look at that. Way better. All right. So in the basement of our tool tray, we have our first ever project, the pan. Now, let's add that third rivet. 
We're going to load it up, get it ready for the next rivet. Not even going to mess around. I'm going right to clamp. So now, instead of a difficult task of trying to get our drill in here and trying to stay on target, we moved, we marked where we wanted it, and we moved it out here where it was very easy to see and get to. So uh, the whole master go get them really came through in a pickle today. So now we have our third hole. And it looks like it's right on. Can you see that right there, baby? It's the rivet is right where we had it marked. All right. So enough for the uh, professional hole finder. I'm going to set that over here. All right. We said we're making three things today. Pow. That's one. Now let's move on to the folding tool. So what we do is, is uh, if we have some special reason, we will make folding tools of every length. Look at this one. This one's got a handle, so you can slide it on there and really get to it. I think that one had a handle. Look at the handle on this baby. So this, you can slide this on the end of the sheet and bend it over. This is specifically for metal roofing. And then I think the rest of these, oh, look at that one. That one just keeps coming. Look at that. Mm, where's it going to stop? Where's it going to? Oh, there it is. So you can see that we make these, and they're very useful. So I want to take you through the process of making a folding tool. And in, uh, a lot of these titles are regional. They, uh, they also can be called a drive turner. If you're in the HVAC industry, that would be a drive turner. All right, so here's what we're gonna make. I want you to come over here. I have a piece of cold rolled steel. It is seven inches wide, it's 16 gauge, that's 062. This is pretty thick stuff. This is also 16 gauge, but this is hot rolled. So cold rolled is hot rolled that goes through an additional process. They actually dip it in oil. Sometimes they call it pickling. And they run it through an additional set of rolls and it gives it a more precise finish. And that's why you'll notice the, the, the color is different. This is hot and this will have some mill scale on it. If we bent that, you would actually see the mill scale crack off. So what they do here is they run this, they take hot rolled, they treat it and they run it through a finer set of rolls and that gives it a more definite, uh, a more defined finish. So I wrote take advantage on here. This line right here, this is where we're going to bend this. So if we cut this piece to the width that we wanted, whenever you fold it in half, they rarely ever line up to a perfect, uh, so that they're perfectly straight across. So what we're going to do is I wrote take advantage if you have an opportunity to get something right and to get it right and get it done faster, I want you to do it. So we're going to go over to the break and I'm going to bend this up on this line right here. So do you want to follow me over to the break or should I meet you over there? All right, here we are at the 10 foot handbrake. We got our piece of cold rolled 16 gauge. It's around 062. And I've got it marked right here on the, the line that I want to bend it on. I'm going to put that in till it lines up right where I want it. We're going to bend it over till it stops, which will be 135 degrees. Because that's 90 degrees plus 45. Now, 
this one, I gotta hold it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it pretty tight. So you can see what we've what we've made here. We folded this over and in, into a in basically a hem. This is still a little wide. I want to take I want to try to clamp that down a little bit. I like that. Let's clamp it from this side. The reason I, I flipped it over is because the brake is closed at that end so that you see it's actually closing unevenly. So if I clamped this down, this end would be tight and this end would not be as tight. So I clamped it down where I liked this one. Then I flipped it over and gave it a little, a little clamp on that side. That's more like it. That's what I like right there. Can you see how well that is? All right, so now, I'm gonna tap this a little bit. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this edge right here I'm going to put this in the shear and I'm going to pull back. Listen. Can you hear that? That's the sound of that return bend hitting the back side of the shear blade. Let me st so this is hitting the back side of the shear. All right. Now, when we do it like that, we know we're going to get a nice, even edge across here. I'm going to take, this is our uh, highly skilled, highly paid, professional grade deburring tool. Let's just run that across there a couple of times. Flip it over, run it this way. emphasis on the highly skilled, highly paid professional. Now, right here, this is the same material, 16 gauge. This is that hot roll, that's why the color is different. I called this the backstop, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in here. Don't try to push it. Nobody's gonna give you more money if you do it the hard way. So you can see what I've done is I've tapped that piece into the middle. I'm going to hold that still and make sure the camera can focus. You got that? Mm -hmm. All right. What cut so, size was that piece? This, the, the long piece? The oh, this piece inside I'm going to show you right now. Man, that's a good question. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loop around. I'm going to find my random one inch straight edge. So you can see right now, my backstop is just floating inside the folding tool. Can you see that? I've got a big void in the back and I got some kind of a random dimension out the front. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our one inch straight edge and we're going to push this down. Let's not, let's tap it. Now, we see that we've buried our backstop almost hard into that corner, but the backstop because this is a one inch edge, the backstop is one inch back from the front. I'm gonna hold still for just a second while you get a look at that. You got it? 
All right, now this side I really like. This is really nice. Over here, looks like my straight edge went in a little too far. So since we already have this, we really like it. We're gonna put three screws in this. And the closer we put the screws out here, the more strength it's gonna give us. We don't wanna put the screw back here because then the tool can actually fold, open up on us. So let me grab our scribe and, oh, inch and a quarter. Let's see what that looks like. I don't think that's far enough. Let's go to inch and a half. All right. I like that. There's an inch and a half. Let's go in half from the side. I'm going in half inch. I'm going in half inch. Well, you take a look at that. I'm going to grab the drill. give ourselves a prick mark right here. We're doing this side first because I like how it lined up. Maybe I should have been sticking my tongue out, okay. Yeah, that was the secret. That's what was missing. So now, let's put a screw in this side because we like it. This is a 1024 screw. Nut and bolt. Yes, nut and bolt, I like that, good job. So I've already got my 3 8 wrench. It's going to go on, hold the nut. I'm going to push down, so I just want to get my hand clear. All right. So now let's revisit this one that it went in a little too far. And we're going to see if we can tap and pry this divider and their our uh, backstop out all right that's good so you noticed I didn't do any hard pushing I'm holding and tapping. Don't push that toward your hand, good heavens. All right, let's try this again, see if we can get it where we want it. Ooh, that's the sound we want. All right. This time, Since we don't have all day, I'm going to add a little bit of cutting fluid to the drill. Stick my tongue out again. Mm. Cutting fluid is the ticket. Let's put a second one in here. All right, 
3/8 wrench on the bottom. I like to use the box end whenever I can. Anytime it's possible, always use the box end of a wrench. You have more points of contact. If you have an open end wrench, you're always only going to be engaging the nut in two locations. Over here you get more. We've got one on each end. Let's put one in the middle. This is a seven inch wide bender. Three and a half. A little bit of sauce. And a little bit of sauce is what I want. Okay, here we go, third hole. I gotta say, this is going along swimmingly. I just like saying swimmingly. All right, boxing on the bottom. There we go. Now let's take our one inch straight edge out and put that away. So now what we have is, let's get rid of all of this stuff. Now what we have is a folding tool. I'm gonna try to sit real still because I want you to be able to see See how the backstop is one inch back from the front edge? I'm gonna give the camera a chance to focus. All right, I wanna make sure everybody knows what we're doing. So that means if I just put this on here and go all the way to the backstop, I'm going to make a one inch bend. The reason we made this at one inch is because we don't always want one inch. Sometimes we want a half inch. Here's the great thing. Half inch is less than one inch. So what we can do is we've marked a half inch on here. Now we can take our folding tool, put it on the half inch line, and now what I'm doing is I'm just applying a little bit of pressure right here. Now, now I've captured the piece. So I'm gonna push down and we're gonna fold. So with our one inch folding tool, we just made a half inch bend. Now what we're gonna make over here, we're gonna drive it home all the way to that backstop. Now we've made a one inch bend. 16 gauge. I just use cold roll on the outside because this is all stuff that I found on the back of the shear. So we made it one inch so that it could be a one inch or it could be a half. If you scribed it half, what, wait, look up here. What else could it also be? It could also be three quarters. See that? It'd be kind of hard to do a quarter, but you owe it to yourself to try. Cost is all the same. So there we go. So we've made a folding tool and we made it one inch back from the end. And look how, look how parallel these two bends came out. If we were to try to bend that, like let's say this is three and a half. If we cut this piece seven inches, and we made a scribe line in the middle of that piece. It is so, un it's, it's unpredictable that we would fold two things 
and they would both come up exactly right where we want them. One is always going to be, you know, ten thousandths, twenty thousandths longer than the other. But what we've done here is we folded it up, hooked it on the shear, brought it back. Now we got an awesome. We have a awesome. What do we have? Oh, awesome keyword. We have a one inch folder. That's gonna be something you can put in your toolbox. And just like when you're old like me someday, you're gonna have a whole bunch of these. You're gonna have some at three quarters. This one's an inch and a half. So look at that. We've already done two things. We made the the whole finder fantastico we made the one inch folding tool all right on to our third project let's get this folding tool over here look at that half inch one inch also does three quarter if you were inclined it could do five eighths possibly eleven sixteenths that's pushing it all right Let's get to our third and final project of the day. Okay, come on over here, baby. I want you to get a good look. We are going to make what I call a creasing wheel. And um, I've made one. We use this for all kinds of things in the shop. But this has welding. This has, I had to cut this disc out. There's a lot of, that's a, that's a, a long way down to the well. Sometimes the bucket comes up dry. So what we're gonna do is I found this blade at our local uh, um, um, affordable tool outlet. And it was actually a, a wheel for cutting cement. But it was, the, it was the closest thing that I could find so that you guys could have a heavy duty disc. With that in mind, we did go find this commercial grade pizza cutting wheel. So if you were so inclined, you could buy a pizza cutting wheel, grind this rivet off and have yourself a nice, a nice wheel. So let's look at this. This is, uh, did you get a, get a good picture of our ingredient list here? Since we're going to cook up a a creasing wheel. So we have one carriage bolt. This one happens to be half 13. Half is the diameter. 13 is the number of threads per inch. Half 13. Now we have four nuts, also half 13. That's important. Two pieces of rubber hose, two half inch flat washers, and one disc. So the reason we're using a carriage head bolt is because with the carriage head bolt, they give you all these threads, and that's gonna be very important to our project. So what I've done, this is a nine inch bolt. You can see I've, I've made a mark at four and a half in the middle. This bolt right here wouldn't work for what we're doing because when you have a, a regular bolt, you have a shoulder and they don't put the threads on far enough. So we wouldn't be able to, to make our project with this, but with the carriage head bolt, you get threads a lot farther. So, um, they, um, a lot of times they go all the way up to the head. There's one more thing I want to show you. This, this is what's known as all thread. Some of these things are regional. Again, this is all thread or threaded rod. So this is, it's basically a bolt without a head on it. So if you were inclined, if you wanted a 12 inch bolt or a 13 inch or an 18, this, this is a five footer, but these also come in 10 foot. So you could cut this all thread, threaded rod. You could cut this to whatever length suits your purpose. 
and then uh, you could screw the nut on the end. And this was just something I wanted you to be aware that this product exists. A lot of you are already going to know about it, but I didn't want to pass up an opportunity to show you. This is threaded rod. So we could make our creasing wheel with threaded rod, but I didn't want you to try to find, uh, this may be difficult in your area, but a carriage head bolt is pretty common at almost every uh, well-equipped hardware store. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our list of ingredients. We're gonna take one rubber hose. We're gonna put it on here. We're gonna take one nut. It's gonna go down past our mark. One more nut. Also down past our mark. I'm gonna push that rubber hose on. I like that. Now the reason we've put two nuts on here is because we're gonna lock them together. Now I'm screwing these two nuts against each other. So now these nuts, neither one of these nuts will be walking around. A washer. My dad was famous for saying, hey, you got a washer for that? That's what he was famous for. That was one of the things he was famous for and for being an awesome dad too. Another washer, creasing wheel, another nut. So what I wanted to do is show you how you can make a useful tool out of parts that you can get um, at your local hardware store, a big box store. So now, we're going to lock these two nuts together. I'm going to check that. Ooh, I really like that. I was checking it for wobbliness. It's very nice, but we don't want to pass up the opportunity. Add a little bit of oil. And let's take our other piece of hose. And look at that. Now we have what we are going to call a creasing wheel. This is the one we just made. This is the one that I made at our welding shop here. I think the one you guys are going to make at home is going to look just as cool as the one I made here. So. So we know why we didn't use a regular bolt because it has a long shoulder, threads don't go all the way. We know what all thread or threaded rod is. These are the three quarter inch wrenches because half 13s are three quarter. Let's move those. Now let's get this professional grade out of here. And our list, you already got a good picture of this. All right. We don't need this. So what I did here is I took a two by four and I cut a groove. So what I, I didn't have the right dado blade here. So I just made four passes down the middle of our board. Just give us a, about a three sixteenths gap. And then I went right back. This is a piece of one inch by one inch angle iron. It's an eight by an eighth inch. So this is one eighth. This is one and one. Another carriage head bolt back here. Wing nut and a washer. Like dad always said, you got a washer for that. Yes, I do. 
Oh, I hope, I'd love to make my dad proud. That'd be the best thing ever. Okay, so what we're going to do now is let's go over to the brake. I just want to do this one cross brake on the brake, and then we'll come back here and we'll do the rest of them right here. You ready to go to the brake? All right, see you at All the right, brake. here we are at the brake, 10-foot handbrake. So I'm only bending this in the handbrake uh, just because it's faster. And when we made our waste basket on the last lesson, some folks wanted to know how did we get that, how did we get the crease in there? So I'm gonna line it up on these lines that I've already drawn, tighten it down, and then I'm just gonna give the brake a little bump. Okay, you know what, we're doing so good. And in the interest of time, let's do this one. So we have four panels here, and we're gonna do a, a different design on every panel. There's those two. So, look at that. I'm just gonna flash this around because I want you to catch some different, this way. Okay, back to the bench. Look at that diamond right there. All right, back to the bench. See you there. Are you still rolling? Nothing up my sleeve. All right. Since you're still rolling, so we did these two panels in the brake just for just to save time. But now we have our creasing wheel and what we're going to do is we're laying this on a towel. The towel is just to give uh, some room for the metal to make a crease. And you know what I want to do? Uh, let's let's go ahead and use this this tool over here, baby. Since this thing is so so pretty, I don't want to booger it up. So what I'm going to do is I've made a pencil mark right here. If I line that angle iron up on the pencil mark, it puts the face of this angle right in the center of the groove where it says angle is in the middle of the groove. So the angle is in the middle of this groove. That allows us to push down into the groove symmetrically. All right. So let's start with our first one. I'm going to loosen that up. This one we couldn't have done in the brake because the brake would make a line all the way across our other panel. So I'm going to line this up on the pencil mark. I'm going to catch that extension cord on my way up. Check the gravity. Gravity check. Check. All right. Let's put... We're on our pencil mark. We're on our line. I'm going to tighten that down. Now let's take our creasing wheel. Why don't you look from right over here. And I'm just going to take this wheel and I'm going to come over here and stop when we get to that, to that line. It's, and these things work best on the push. So we're gonna push down good and hard. And just in case that wasn't enough, we're gonna give it a second one and a third one. And 
gonna lift this up. Works better on the push. So I'm pushing over against the face of this one by one by eighth angle iron. One, two, three. So whenever we made our waste basket in the former episode, we folded a hem on each side. But really what I'm doing here in today's lesson is showing you the value and purpose of this tool. We're going to go three. One. Two, three, we've got one last crease to put in it here. Now this is part of the beauty of our creasing wheel is we don't have to put a mark across our final panel. One, Two, three. We're going to come back to that. Now we're going to use this towel to create a void because we have to have a void in order to get a crease. This is the one that has the question mark on it because we are gonna go and we're gonna just do whatever we feel like doing here. Now we're gonna go back to our bender, we could go over to the brake, but I want to show you what we can do with what we've made here. It seems to work better on the push, so we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Sure, that's what we're going to do. Oh, okay. That is what we're going to do. So we're going to do, so all this material has a memory and that once it's, once it hit a, a bend has begun, it wants to, it wants to go ahead and continue that bend. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, Six. So like you said, we're going to bend it up here, but if we started to bend it up first, then these components are going to come around and they're going to infringe on our progress. So we're going to go to the last one. We're going to clamp that. We're going to give roll that six times. 
One, two, three. Push as hard as you feel comfortable pushing. Four, five, six. You can push less and just make more. So now, well, we already have this clamped in here. We've run six creases across there. We're gonna just take this. And it's gonna wanna bend on that crease. And let's do another one. got the creases in it. And we got one to go. So we could have done this in the break, but our objective here at Sheet Metal is fun is I want to make these processes and these projects I want to I want to make it to where there's really no excuse. If you want to make this, I want you to be able to make it. So let's finish off this last bend. We've already put six creases in it. So again, this is just a mock-up of the waste paper basket that we made last uh, episode. So, let's see. There's that one. I like the shiny galvanized because it gives the reflection gives you something to really be distracted about. This is interesting. There's a diamond in the middle. And if, if, if you repeated this pattern on all four sides, there would be a diamond on each corner as well. If you decided to do this all the way, you'd have a diamond in the center of the panel. And here, see this half of a diamond? The second half of that diamond would appear around the corner. So that's a real, that's a real eye catcher. This is an industrial, this is what we call a cross break. We use this whenever we make air conditioning duct. You can see it in our plenum with an end cap. And what it does is whenever the furnace or air handler kicks on and it inflates the plenum, what it does is this prevents oil can because you don't want it to hear pucka pucka every time uh, the plenum is filled. So hear that right there? That's because I'm pushing very hard, but I'm, I'm giving you the oil can sound. So the cross brake is there to either minimize or prevent uh, oil canning. And then this is the one that uh, we just decided to do whatever we felt like doing. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna twist this a little bit because I want you to, ooh, ah, wow. All right, so we did it. We did another episode. We have the, the, the whole finder one million. Look at that, what a handy little gadget that turned out to be. We made a folding tool with a one inch back set stop in it. So we just made this uh, to whatever application was. So whenever we were folding these, we could have folded these hems on the bottom of our wastebasket with our folding tool. Folding tool and a creasing wheel. So I'll call them back. <laughs> so. Uh, that worked out perfect right at the end of the right at the end of the lesson. So uh, we've learned how to make a creasing wheel. 
we've learned how to add that to a two by four with a saw cut and a pencil mark and a piece of one by one by eighth inch angle iron. We clamped that in there. We gave it a few creases and then that, then we're able to bend it. And we got, you get a pretty nice bend on that. You get a pretty nice bend for what it would cost you for a, a two by four and a piece of uh, angle iron. So we got the folder. We set it at one inch because then we can scribe and use it for half, three quarters, 11 sixteenths. Nobody ever bends anything 11 sixteenths, so forget that part. Uh, the, uh, what do we call this thing again, hun? It's the, uh, oh, it says right here, hole finder uh, especial. I like that. So, uh, and we've got the folder, the creasing wheel. I think you guys are going to be able to really make some cool things with what we've learned today. And I had fun. I hope you guys had fun watching them more than doing. I, uh, more than watching, I hope you guys do it. If you make something, if you make a waste basket, you make an organizer bin, you saw us when we started out today's lesson, we added some more folks into our Fabulous Fabricators books, Fabulous Fabricators book. And if you make something, uh, sheet metal is fun at yahoo.com. Other than that, we are so grateful that you guys stopped by. This has been quite an adventure for us, and I hope it has been for you as well. And uh, Noah, take it to him, man. Go. Have fun. Show them what you're made of. See you guys on the next lesson on Sheet Metal is Fun.